Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And uh, man, we started out the year 0 and 4. We are now 3 and 4 on a three game win streak. And look at this, man. We finally got some commits besides Josh Dunbar, who looks like he's going to be our top cornerback commit. Now we have a top special teamer, Adam Davis. He's a punter. He's got 89 kick power, so no more going for it on a 30-yard line because we know our field goal kicker can't make a field goal. We'll be able to make those field goals now. He's got 89 kick power, which is a huge step from what we have now. I think our kicker and punter now, I think the highest has 72 kick power. So, I mean, that's going to be a huge boost for us. Then we have Adam Grant, who is a pretty good tackle. Look at him. He's got 73 run block, 77 pass block. But impact blocking at 81 and excel at 90. So, I mean, we're going to need to use that a lot and strength at 80. Because you see us get stuffed on a lot of fourth downs or going for or third downs. We just don't have the strength up front. And then an athlete, Vince Cohen, we finally got some speed right away. He's going to be our fastest guy. 92 excel, 90 speed. But if you look at him, he looks like he can play a little bit of offense. I mean, he's got only 52 carrying, which sucks because if he had higher carrying, I think I would start this guy at running back day one because, I mean, I don't have a speed guy at all, and Ingram's going to be graduating, but he looks like a defensive guy as well. He's got 69 tackle. He's got 71 play rec and 74 zone, which is pretty decent, but his offensive skills aren't that good either. I mean, Catching at 69, which leads me to believe that he's going to be on defense because look at his spec tag, 55, catching traffic's 55, route running 63. So they listed him as an athlete, but I think he's going to play defense probably more than likely a corner, um, but he has speed. So, I mean, we'll see how he shapes out, but let's just look at our matchup going up against Appalachian State. So looking at the difference between us and Appalachian State, they are in the Sun Belt. They're four and two up to this point, four and zero in conference. Uh, they are a pretty good defensive team. I mean, they're 23 in the rush, 43 in the pass, and then 22 overall. So I mean, they have a good defense. Their offense is what's uh, in the middle of the pack. They're 63 in total offense, 46 rush, 77 uh, pass. But let's just look at their leaders led by Lamb and Moore at the running back position, and then Metters. Let's just look at defense. Who, who do we have to look out for? So Clifton Duck is their leading cornerback. He's a sophomore, only 78 overall, but he has four picks on the year. And if we look at the ranks of how he's ranked up versus the rest of the NCAA, the leader is five, and he's got four. So, I mean, through these first uh, six games, six or seven games, I mean, he's pretty much at the top of the NCAA as far as interceptions so we gotta stay out of his way try not to throw the ball to whoever he's guarding because he's gonna make some big plays so let's just hop into this game let's go before hopping into this game I want to check out the injuries look at this game man Donnie Wolf can actually come back during this game he's probable and then Carrington's injured for one more week so uh I think Donnie Wolf is gonna come off the bench if, if needed because I like what Zach DeLuca did last game. He had a good game leading us down the field on a lot of drives, especially versus the number one defense. So Donnie Wolf is gonna maybe come off the bench if, if something happens to Zach DeLuca, which it possibly could because we've been getting hurt all the time. It could it could happen. So let's just hop into this man. No more interruptions. Let's go. So you might be thinking, how did you get Appalachian State in the game? Remember when I first started this dynasty, I actually had to import a team builder team. So, but for some reason, my game doesn't allow me to import more than two. So I had to import this team, Appalachian State and Marquette. So I couldn't, uh, I actually tried to import Coastal Carolina, but I was unsuccessful for some reason. So this was the team that I had to settle for because Appalachian State is actually a pretty good team in real life. I mean, they came from FCS to FBS and like it was like no other. I mean, they really came in snapping. So here we go, man. Let's get into this gameplay. As you can see, the Appalachian State Mountaineers came out 
scoring a touchdown on their first drive, and we're trying to get something going on offense, but we cannot get anything going. They, they came out on defense right away. So here they go, man. They got Jalen Moore at running back, and then they got Lamb at quarterback. So on a first and 10, their second drive here, throwing the ball to Duffield, and Duffield is getting – Past the 40-yard line, up to about the 32-yard line. So on a second and five, Ramsor gets the interception this time. Remember, <laughs> I got somebody in the comment section that's bothering me about how to say his name. Is it Ramsor? I mean, Bruh. is it Ramsour? Ramsor? I don't know. I, I don't even know how to say it, but I, I, I'll say Ramsor for now. And uh, if I get it wrong, uh, correct me again, I guess. So here we go. Zach DeLuca in his second game starting. I mean, he's not looking good. I mean, we are just like right now our offense is pretty non-existent. And Lamb in this uh, Appalachian State offense, they're getting good field position because, I mean, look where they're at. And look at this. Moore makes a move on our defense. And look at me. I'm trying to control this safety here. And... <laughs> I get absolutely juked on that one. So Appalachian State is up 14 points in the first quarter. So here we go, man. We got to get this offense going. But on the first play of the next possession, we turn it over. And now they have even better field position. They start this next drive on the 15, giving the ball to Vincent, their fullback, up the middle on a triple option. But on a third and five, attempting to run a screen play, they throw it to Moore on the outside. And that's going to be just short of the first down. So they have to go for it on fourth. And we're sending a blitz with our linebackers. Attempting to run the ball with Vincent once again. But Vincent can't get to the first down marker. So big play by our defense coming up with the fourth down stop. So now we have it inside of our 10-yard line. And Zach DeLuca is still at quarterback. But this time he's going to find Medley on the sideline at the 30-yard line. So... Zach DeLuca, I mean, he's had a very, very slow start. That's his first completion in his first five passes. But on the next play, I mean, that throw is just horrible. I mean, my guys are wide open, and he's not hitting them. I mean, he's just not doing good this game. But luckily, I have Ingram to make up for it. He get barrels forward for a few yards. And Gooden is actually getting in for a rare catch this time. Stiff arming his way to a 12-yard gain. So now we're past the 50-yard line on the second and six. Throwing the ball to McCray on the outside. The freshman McCray, he's kind of slowed down a little bit because I've found out that Wayne Miller is actually a pretty good slot receiver. Medley, I use him. But on the next play, Cantrell. Speaking of people I've been using lately, Cantrell, the tight end, is getting in for the touchdown and he's been just a godsend because look at him he's an impact player now and so is Ingram I mean Ingram and Cantrell are biggest impact players on offense and it seems like Cantrell is one of those guys that just he got better throughout the year and he's one of those guys that just Bruh. improved but look at this cheese the computer straight cheats me on that one I do not get a tackling animation I kind of just run past them kind of bump them and they throw out the little stiff arm, and I don't get the tackle. So Lamb runs for a 65-yard gain, and a couple of plays later, he's throwing to Duffield in the back of the end zone, and Appalachian State takes the 14-point lead in this game. And, man, <laughs> another hole for us to dig out of. Ingram getting the ball here, getting barely to the first down marker and facing another third and eight on this next drive. DeLuca's going to roll out to the right. Doesn't see anybody open, but luckily Wayne Miller makes a move, gets open. That's an Aaron Rodgers type play where the play breaks down. The receivers get open on the second uh, route. But here we are throwing deep once again and Zach DeLuca Facing a blitz on that one, Medley had a comeback route, and look where DeLuca threw it. He threw it to the wrong spot, so the Appalachian State offense takes over, and they take advantage on a long pass play this time, and, man, we are in a hole. Down 21 points in this game, and, I mean... <laughs> It's not looking good for our defense, but on a fourth and one, we have to go for it because, man, we, I mean, if you're down by this much, you got to take your chances. So here we are, man, a minute and a half left in this game, but you know what? 
I had to put Donnie Wolf in because Zach DeLuca was just not looking good. I mean, he just wasn't doing enough for me. So I put Donnie Wolf in, and he's doing a pretty good job on this next drive, getting inside the one-yard line. And there's 50 seconds left in this game, and now there's 20 seconds left. And on a third and goal, giving the ball to Jared Ingram, somebody we can rely on. And he's getting in for the to the touchdown. I mean, so we go into half. We get the ball at half, but we're down by two scores, which is a manageable lead. But Donnie Wolf shows some inaccuracy on that one. But honestly, he doesn't show that much inaccuracy for the rest of the game because here he is finding Keon Medley, uh, lobbing it there on the slant route. But on a second and four, giving it to Jared Ingram. Ingram is bullying his way to the first down marker. And here we go. Donnie Wolf showing that he can lead some drives down the field and Wayne Miller remember I was just talking about him he's getting open that time for the 30 yard pass across the middle that was a cover two they were playing but we take advantage of McCray and he's just sharing the ball all over the field Donnie Wolf is so here we go I mean we are inside the 25 yard line on a counter play Jared Ingram's gonna get inside the five yard line so what a great relief it is to have somebody who can you know distract the defense like this because with DeLuca with Carrington we don't really have that running threat but with Wolf we definitely have it and these teams don't know how to handle it so we are down by one score here I mean this is manageable I mean there's still a whole quarter and a half left so on a third and eight uh, Lamb is going to drop back find his receiver Duff Field the tight end and he's going to get past the 50 yard line and Duffield is just killing us up to this point. Every time they get a big play, it seems like it's going to Duffield. And Lamb is sitting in the pocket on the next play, finding Metters uh, across the middle of the field for his first reception of the game. So now Lamb is inside the 10 yard line on a first and goal, having all day to throw. Where's the pass rush? He's finding Duffield once again, getting to the two yard line. So now a second and goal. Lamb is going to drop back under center, and he's going to get into his fullback, Vincent, but Vincent can't get in for the in, to, into the end zone. So on a third and goal, he's going to drop back, find his uh, receiver that time, but can't drag his feet. So now it's down to a fourth down, a triple option. Gotcha, fake, and he's throwing out to the flat, and what a goal line stand by this Marquette Golden Eagles defense. And they had four downs to do it, but this time uh, Frederick is going to get in for the tackle, and we're going to take over, man. I mean, we're inside the five, but we got Ingram. We're going to spread the uh, field out, give it to him on the inside zone, and here we go. I mean, Donnie Wolf, like I said, he brings another dimension to our team. We can run these triple options. We can get out in this space without defenders really catching up to us because he's got that speed. He's got 79 speed, so he's pretty decent with running the triple option. So here we go, man. Appalachian State is on their heels, and we're finding receivers just nickeling and diving them up the field, and Wayne Miller across the middle, this time across the 50. So now, I mean, it's getting towards the end of the third quarter, and look at this. I mean, look at this drive. I mean, we are just wearing them out each play. Little small gains, triple options, fakes, uh, play action reads, RPOs, whatever we can throw at them. And they don't know what's coming. So now we're on to the fourth quarter. And on a second and inches, Herman Rogers, who we've been waiting for to come through for us, the sophomore. We do have him for three more years on top of this year. And we really haven't gotten him going. And maybe it's because he's not really much of an outside receiver. Maybe he's meant to play the slot, but the way that uh, I have my other guys playing, Keon Medley and Wayne Miller, I mean, they're playing the slot really, really well. Maybe we don't need Herman Rogers gotcha, there, bitch. but Sergio is getting in for the sack that time. Sergio Parrish, that is. So Appalachian State, I mean, their offense has been stagnant this second half because, remember, they were up two scores at halftime. They haven't scored a single point in this second half. So here they go. I mean, Lamb is dropping back to pass on a second and long, and he has all day to throw, but this time he's throwing Give deep. But Rivera, the sophomore, is coming up with the interceptions. 
interception. And this is the guy that I was talking about in the beginning of the year. And you know what? If you just notice, just look back at all my videos. You don't see a lot of deep passes down the right side of the field. You always see it to the left. And that's because Noah Carter is on the left. And Rivera is on the right. And he just locks up that side. It just seems like he's just got everything under control. But here's this Marquette offense, and we are doing pretty well in the run game. Giving the ball to Ingram this time on a third and five, and we've been doing pretty well at running the ball on the third down. So here we are, man. Three minutes left in this game. All we got to do is milk some clock, maybe get into the end zone. We don't want to leave enough time on the clock for them. So inside of the 20-yard line, giving the ball to Ingram one more time. And we are inside the 10-yard line. So here we go. Two minutes left in this game. On a third and goal, though, Medley is getting the ball, but he cannot get in for the touchdown. So it's fourth and goal. I decide to go for it. A triple option this time. But Donnie Wolf attempts to pitch the ball to the running back. And we end up fumbling. And what a, I mean, just a collapse of a play that time and Appalachian State I mean they got time I mean they got a minute and a half to drive down the field a field goal wins this game and Duffield goes over 100 yards with that catch but look at this man Ali Christian Bruh. was there for the sack but somehow the quarterback still gets it off so first and 10 a minute and a half left throwing down the right sideline left sideline and noah carter i was just talking about noah carter he gives up a lot of big plays but this time he comes up with the interception and i mean it's been a long time coming look at this barely over the top of the receiver's hands and noah carter comes up with it and this is the first game that both my corners both my starting corners got interceptions and i mean what a relief it is to have you know a defense bail you out for once because our defense has been getting burned all year but up to this point i mean look at this i mean we are just beasting in all points of the game jared ingram you can see how much of a beast he is he's running over the middle linebacker on that one and to finish off the game we do milk the clock and kick the game winning field goal and Marquette, can you believe it? We went from 0-4 to 4-4. I mean, we are streaking here. And Donnie Wolf comes into the game. Only three incompletions. I mean, he came in beasting. And he's shown that he might be our starter because he just brings a certain dynamic. And even with the lower accuracy rating, he only had three incompletions. I mean, he was completing everything. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, Appalachian State goes down, Marquette, we're back to 500, can you believe it? We only have one more game, I believe it's five wins to a bowl game, I might be wrong there, but it's either five or six, but I mean, we're close, so let's get it, man, let's go.